So I decided to make this video so I could talk about my opinion about biracial people in this space. In this space, I identify as MGM only because it's more descriptive. In regular life, I just say that I'm mixed. But I want to talk about my um, opinions about the whole um, biracial versus MDM versus golden versus light skin in this space. So first of all, the space is the golden sphere. It is not like a biracial sphere or a mulatto sphere exclusively. Some people are trying to make it exclusive because they feel like their identity is really being erased, you know, and I, and, and as somebody mixed, I get that. So a lot of the time you have these people going around like, Oh, all African Americans are mixed. All MGM, MGM just means mixed. Everybody is mixed. Like that's, that's really erasing my identity. And the reason I came to this space is because as somebody who is African American and white, my identity is erased. I don't have an identity in this country. Even though my parents were mixed, they didn't have an identity in this country. My grandparents mixed. They did not have an identity. None of these people have an identity in this country. The only identity that we have in this country is black. So some people have an issue with blackness in general. I don't have an issue with blackness. I have more an issue with just having a lack of an identity. And I think it's two separate things. Some of the biracial people in this space, sometimes they can be embarrassing because it becomes very clear that they are more believing of white people's version of blackness, right? So black people have their opinions about who white people are. And generally, it's not positive. And white people have their opinions about who black people are. And a lot of the times, that's not positive. What happens when you're mixed, you have to balance that out, okay? And a lot of the things that white people say about black people aren't true. And a lot of things that black people say about white people isn't true. You have to learn how to balance out the two and cancel out all the negativity, Um I got into a dispute with somebody because I felt like they were bringing a lot of that negativity into this space. And we are both groups. So to me, that really bothered me because I feel like I value both sides. If you only value one side, what are you saying? If you are black and white and you only value whiteness, what are you saying? You don't think that's problematic? If you are black and white and you only value whiteness, you can just date, procreate, marry, remain white. You don't have to be mixed. I feel like this space should only be for people who are about being mixed, you know, and in order for you to be mixed, you have to be mixed with black. So it's like you can't be mixed with something and then hate it at the same time. I think people confuse negative treatment from the black community with then coming in and wanting to say things that are inappropriate so to me, I have a problem with that because that's always going to be the first thing that's brought back up in your face. It's going to be the first thing that makes people look at this movement and say, OK, I'm not going to take you guys seriously. You guys are just a bunch of like, you know, fools or whatever, saying all kinds of racist stuff. And to me, that is a problem, because if you want to get any kind of advocacy going, if you want any type of government or political changes to occur, if you want social media to take notice and say, hey, you know, uh, mixed and light skin and biracial discrimination is a thing. If you want these types of things to occur, you you got to have your hands have to be clean. You can't have dirty hands. Um, some people, too, are in this space. Some of the men. Oh, my goodness. The men, the biracial men. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not protecting the women in this space, some of you, but you want to control who we talk to, where we go, who gives us attention. You're more worried about who's, who's talking to us or who's looking at us than you're worried about how you're treating us or how we might feel in this space. This is a space for both men and women. So I feel like our relationships you know, that that's going to have an impact. And that's a whole nother story. 
But just just the, some of the biracial men, it's like there has to be some balance. And to me as an MGM, I feel like MGM people sometimes can be more balanced and more objective just because they've had an opportunity to be a part of both groups in different ways and just observe them without having the pressure of having their parents being one race or the other or having people constantly tell them, you got to pick one side or the other. As an MGM, I do feel like you can kind of navigate it more easy because people just assume that you're biracial, you know, but then when you talk to them and you tell them they're not, you know, they, they look at you in a different way, you know, and even though they may look at you as a black person or a mixed person, I feel like it's a lot easier than having parents of two different races. I feel like having parents of two different races is actually very difficult because neither of your parents can really give you an identity. They can't say you're just like me. You know, they're going to say, oh, well, you're something else. You're not like me. You're, you know, and, and when you're mixed and you have two mixed parents, you're like, well, both my parents are mixed. So you know what your identity is. The next step is having it be recognized nationally. So I feel like to just seek only biracial people to create this identity is a little bit problematic because you would be relying only on first generation biracial people. So that means that when that person passes away, there's no legacy. It's just a group of first generation people. I don't, I don't see that being able to be a long-term identity. And I, and I think that that's very purposeful, you know, to say that you're biracial and to not give you an identity of mixed. It's very purposeful because if they can prevent you from creating this separate category, as you notice, there are a lot of uh, white people that want mixed children. There's a lot of black people that want mixed children. If they can prevent that from occurring, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to push for you to have an identity. You're going to have to push and you're going to have to advocate for that. So to me as an MGM, that is my opinion. And I hope everybody, um, you know, takes some time and thinks about what I said and add some good input to this video because I'm just seeing different things and I understand like I know I know what it's like in a way to be biracial right but I also know that there are certain things that you can and can't do if you're talking about advocacy and I think I'm more interested in the advocacy aspect I'm more interested in you know um you know, the community aspect. And it's, it's difficult if you're going to have like these different people kind of like joking around all the time or, you know, trolling and excluding people that makes it harder. So I just wanted to share my opinion. And when I say trolls, joking around, and excluding, if I pointed you out in the video, that's who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about everybody else. So I don't want to get smoke from everybody in the sphere but I'm talking about specific people who are known to constantly be trolling, but it just creates a negative dynamic overall because we're, we're talking about advocacy here. And I'm not going to look down on you because I know a lot of social media is trolling, but you also have to sometimes change it up a little bit when you're talking about making some changes. So thanks for listening, everyone. Please like, share and subscribe.